Hello and welcome to episode 87 of the Boot Nerds podcast. I'm not sure if you can tell, but I just woke up. J. Mike, how's it going? <laughs> Things are great on my end, my friend. I can't tell that you just, what well, you look fresh as ever. So that is great. You actually look, uh, you, you look happy these days, which is uh, like a new, uh, you, you, you're sparkling. <laughs> it's like, uh, it's, 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 it's awesome that things are not just, you know. Yeah, no, it's good. good. It's yeah. good. Oh. Although, you know what? Can I just, not to bring up puregripsocks.com where you can buy pure grip socks for $14.99 and or pure sleeves for $9.99 a pair. But hmm, I, I've heard they're the best out there. They're pretty good. Um, yeah, yeah. Certainly the best value for money. Um, Absolutely. But I, it's, it's not a common complaint, but I've seen it enough to where I feel like I should address it. And I feel like a lot of people that are making this comment maybe watch the Boot Nerds podcast, but the sleeves. There's a little stripe at the top of the sleeves and a lot of people are saying, oh, my league doesn't allow for branding from a random company, which I don't think that most leagues, whether it's competitive or recreational, are that strict on anything. But- J. Mike has the solution right there in his hands. If it's really that much of a problem for the small words to be pure on the back of your leg, you can take a Sharpie, you can even take a piece of tape in a matching color and just cover it up and it's it's not a big deal. <laughs> that, is, that is like the, 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 the boot gear hack number one, Sharpie. A Sharpie goes with everything. Like yeah. that you can just, you can do so much with the Sharpie. <laughs> yeah, very powerful tool. <laughs> Absolutely. So it's uh, so a good shout. Uh, we're not going to talk more about the Pure Grip Socks today until you, you know, decide to do another shameless plug. Um, I'm sure <laughs> there's going to be more of that. Um, but today we are actually bringing up something that's based on one of you guys' questions out there. Uh, we got a question uh, a, a couple of episodes back uh, about which boots we really wanted to discontinue or which boots we discontinue if we were running the brands. And um, and, and we kind of talked about it and figured that it, it would be a fun little, uh, it would be a fun little episode to do. Uh, so today we're going to do it this way that I am basically going to bring up three things that I would discontinue or, or, you know, like severely change, if we can put it that way, like alter significantly. Um to you, and then then we're gonna hear your thoughts about it. So okay. um, cool. let's let's cancel and or change some football boots. Right. Uh, so <laughs> I think without further and and, and the, the funny thing is that uh, last episode we talked about oh how it is to create football boots and our poor designers who spend two years and we we slack off their designs. Basically, we've taken it a step <laughs> further now. So now we're just gonna kill off their entire silos and um, yeah. Um, so we're back to being the, the douchebags <laughs> uh, on, on the other side of the screen. But but that's a completely different discussion, I guess. Um, the first boot, I, I don't know if we should, st let's start with the obvious one. And that would be the Adidas uh, Nemesis silo. Now it's a little bit of a funny, uh, it's a little bit of a funny thing for me because I actually reckon that the new Nemesis 0.1, as it's just called, with the new texture on, which is also kind of, stupid with their whole naming system. It makes no sense at the moment, the Adidas naming. Again, completely different story, but I actually think it's a good football boot. And, and that's a little bit of a weird thing to then want to go and discontinue it. But, but even though the Nemesis kind of makes up for, for all the, the, the flaws it had as a silo and as a concept, I think, compared to earlier, when it had no grip texture on the on the front, I still think that that the silo and the, the the overall concept and idea for the Nemesis might be running on fumes, uh, and 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 there's not much. I don't think there's much left in the tank for Nemesis to you know it doesn't have too much to offer anymore. And I think if Adidas are clever, they're gonna you know they're gonna discontinue the the, the silo. And focus their attention either on just like the current silo uh, silo lineup. Or, you know, go back to the drawing board and think, okay, do we want a fourth silo? Uh, and if so, what should it be that can have the kind of same disruptive effect as the Nemesis had back then? Something new, something different. I don't think the Nemesis will ever be that, but so I think they should let it rest as good as it is because um, it feels like it doesn't really have any direction currently. I yeah, I 100% agree with with that general evaluation. I think, unfortunately, the Nemesis line from the get-go was not as well-received as I maybe thought it was going to be. I thought mm. the original Nemesis design back in 2017 was really cool. 
Like I liked the concept. I thought it was very visual and I thought the response was going to be a lot better than it ended up being. But for whatever reason, people did not respond to either the point one or the laceless model. And I thought the point one was actually quite a good football boot. And, and to be fair, I think all the Nemesis point ones have been decent. Pre- uh, they, they've all been good football boots. Added as a problem. And then the Nemesis problem has just been that, that added as have offered the X, which has by and large felt pretty similar, also looked similar, has kind of targeted the same consumer and the X has just been more desirable. So people have chosen that mostly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and that's just a shame because if the if the X hadn't been there, the Nemesis would have been a great product. And I think a lot of people would actually have enjoyed wearing it. We can also see now that, you know, there's a lot of Adidas players going from uh, the X19 boots into the Nemesis. Uh, I noticed uh, Daniel James and Ander Herrera uh, just, just to name a few, who actually, I think they maybe the X Ghost is a little bit too raw, a little bit too minimalistic for for them because the 19 was a little bit of a padded, more general, a speed boot type. So, so the Nemesis is this brilliant um, middle ground for them, and that's kind of what's against retiring the Nemesis because it is, it is probably the most, uh, I would say. <laughs> How do you say this? It's probably the Adidas boot that is um, that is the most uh, generally uh, like it, it's it's how do you say it? It's got the biggest reach. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like, I, I like, think the right way to put it, Jay, is that if you like if you like what Adidas has been doing with their boots over the last four or five years, the Nemesis is kind of the last standing boot from the brand that has that same general kind of vibe and feel to it, where the X kind of goes back into a direction for speed boots with the synthetic materials that doesn't have the softness or the sock-like sensation that I think a lot of people have kind of expected from football boots over the last little while. Obviously, the Predator is very extreme with the extra grip. That's certainly not for everybody, and the Copa is kind of its own thing that may or may not appeal to you because of the fact that it's leather. So unlike when the X19 was the current model and you compared that to the Nemesis, the X was kind of just the better variation of that boot in most people's eyes, where the Nemesis now, as it stands, is it kind of separates itself from the other three lines, but it's it's not getting the Neymar factor in terms of this like instant popularity because there's not... Unfortunately, there's no player that Adidas can bring on that's going to revive that line at this point. Because really, the marketing strategy from day one has been, hey, Messi, just as you take Barcelona and put the team on your back, we're going to give you the nemesis, and you're going to put this line of football boots on your back, and we hope that's going to work. And it didn't work. It's the crazy thing, right? Because it has arguably one of the best players of all time, if not the best, wearing these boots, getting loads of signature models and all that stuff, and it's still not popular. Like then there's just like a fundamental problem here for the silo. And, yeah. and, and, and what I really wanted to bring out and, and in saying that it, that it reached, it, it had a wide reach in, you know, I don't think there's anyone who would put on the Nemesis and really hate it because it's, it's a pretty comfortable boot. It fits most foot types. It has a lovely touch in the ball. It's relatively light. It's just a nice, well-rounded boot. For me, the new grip texture here on the, on the upper was a welcome addition. And if, Adidas had released this last year. I think the Nemesis would have been much stronger for it because now they're just a little bit too late because it's more or less the same concept as the Phantom GTs. Yeah, and I think the other thing that we're not even considering with the Nemesis line right now is as good as the point one is, it's it's certainly held back from a reputation standpoint by the plus. And (laughs) Addy, I don't know why because the marketing strategy from them has been very much to just push the laceless models and almost ignore the existence of the point one in a lot of the marketing material. Obviously, with the the endorsement deals and players wearing them, you're seeing more direct point one marketing. But even over even when Messi at the start of the Nemesis, when he had his own line of football boots, they would always have him promoting the laceless model when he pretty much never wore it. Mm. So. It, I, I don't know. I, I just think it's one of those things where they're clearly just trying to tr- trick the general consumer. And when you have a guy like Messi headlining the boots, where it's very clear that he's not wearing the much stranger looking mid-cut laceless model, 
I, I just think that turns a lot of people off from the line in general. And then also, look, we just saw Nike make a huge move by switching from four lines to three. And now that I come, now that I'm thinking about it, has there ever been an era where Nike or Adidas has had four very successful lines all running at the same time? There really hasn't been. There's always been that fourth and sometimes even a, th a third model where they have two very popular models and two not so popular models or three popular and one not so popular. It, it's very difficult, I think, to get enough attention and enough of a consumer base on four different lines within the same brand. It just hasn't. The Nemesis, as, as good as the concept has been and as good as the boots have been, I, it, there's just not enough interest to steal away from the other lines and it's certainly not drawing new people into the brand either. True. I want to say that just just to just to 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 get an answer out to to what you said with four popular lines. I guess 2014 the Nike lineup they had the obviously the Mercurials, they just had the the Magista, Hypervenom 1 was still around. And then obviously the Chempo, that was the five. That was still pretty good. Yeah. I mean. Yeah, it's, it's been done. I think even in, this, in the CTR 360 days, early CTR 360 days. True. 2010 could have also been a good shout. Pr pretty strong across the board. But uh, yeah, it's, it's a very difficult thing to do. And if you mm. are going to have that popularity on four lines, it's typically going to be for a pretty short period of time because eventually yeah. people gravitate towards the one that is the most popular. Agreed. It, it's funny because we, we just made a podcast talking about limited edition releases. And I saw a lot of comments in the video that I did of your boots, were, which were limited to 95 pairs. And there's a bunch of people like, oh, they should have made a lot more. Why, what's the point of doing these limited releases when you can't get them? It, it's all about driving interest. And as much as people want exclusive stuff, they do end up gravitating towards all wanting the same thing anyways. So <laughs> again, this it's great for consumers to have as much variety as possible. And I'd love to have four, five, six different models from these big brands, which they're fully capable of. But when you do that, there's only going to be so much market share for that particular model within the consumer base that is dedicated to your brand in the first place. And ideally, I think with a fourth line, you want to have a concept that's new enough to where it could potentially sway some people that are already like dedicated Adidas consumers, but you also wanted to draw in people from other brands and the nemesis from day one, that was the goal for them, I think. And it just hasn't worked out. Exactly. And that, that's maybe my, my biggest fear if, if Adidas continue with the nemesis is that it's just going to cannibalize the X and it feels like they're really pushing hard on the X right now. That's going to be like, it's going to be the X and the Pret. That's the, like the flagship models, right? Um, so yeah. Kill the nemesis. Yeah, I, I sorry, think so, sorry, that's Mark the right Mula. move. Let's let's kill the nemesis. <laughs> um, second boot that I would probably kill off, and is not as old as the nemesis, but I would uh, I would say um, thank you and bye bye to the New Balance Tequila line in general. Uh, not because the Tequila boots have been bad, but because the V three has been uh, anything less than what I want it to be. Uh, or any, or not anything less, anything but what I wanted it to be. That's the right way to say it. Because I had high expectations. I thought, okay, knit, laceless, consider me interested. And then they made this. And it, for, for me, it just doesn't work. It, it's, it's stiff and the fit is weird. And, you know, I, I never found myself to, to feel confident in these. And I never found it to feel like the first two tequilas and especially the first tequila did. That was a really nice boot, super comfortable, very slipper. Like this feels like they've seen the, the popularity of the Predator and thought, oh, we should also have a laceless control boot. How do we do that in a way that's not a Predator? And uh, yeah. I would, yeah. again, I would just say they tried something, it didn't work. They've swayed too far from the original concept, which had some, it, it had something to it. The Kayla doesn't work. The name is tainted now. Uh, drop it, find a new angle. Yeah, look, I think I think what the, the Tequila V3 ended up being is this 
fairly generic interpretation of a, a laceless football boot that feels from day one like it's dated in comparison to your other options, more popular options from the Addy brand. And even the Lotto laceless option, I think, is significantly better um, than what New Balance have come up with just from a I feel and comfort and fit perspective. Yeah, I haven't tried the Lotto boot, so I uh, I couldn't say, but 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 I take your word for it. Yeah, no, um, Lotto did a good job, I would say, with what, what they did. Um, the one thing that I will say is that I, you, you said something interesting in that the Tequila name is now tainted. And I think something that's been very strange for me with New Balance and the direction that they've gone in since switching from Warrior is they've really stuck and held firm on this Furon Tequila naming system. And okay, the Tequila is now tainted, but there was two pretty decent models that came before it. Furon literally took five generations it wasn't until the sixth generation that they made a boot that was worthwhile. So you, you want to talk about tainted names within a brand? Yeah, I don't think right. anybody it's cares about Furon or Tequila as a, as a line of shoes. I understand that they want to have, to me, it seems like they're trying to chase something that Nike has kind of done pretty well mm. with the Mercurial mm. series, right? Where it's like, we're going to be on the 14th Vapor and we're going to be on the 8th Superfly. And that's kind of cool to have that lineage. And that's obviously working pretty worked pretty well for Nike with maybe, maybe not as much in football boots, but with like basketball shoes and running shoes. Sure, they all yeah. have this one after the next after the next. And you can kind of go through the history, but the, the history is fairly bright in most of those situations with Nike models that have had over 10 variations. If you're going back in the history of Furon and Tequila, it's like, oh, this is extremely uninteresting. And I think a name change would go a long way in whatever they decide to do next, regardless of whether or not the replacement for the Tequila is a control boot or something else. And we saw this with, we see this with Nike all the time. People were really upset when the Magista got switched to Phantom Vision. And as, as popular as Magista Obra 1 was, which was extremely popular, Magista Obra 2 kind of fell off in terms of popularity, especially I mean, in the, the second run of the colorways. Name. Yeah. Yeah. People didn't care anymore. So as, as, as upset as people were that the, the Phantom Vision wasn't the Magista Obra 3, which it very well could have been, I think changing the name to Phantom Vision, while ultimately the interest in the boot didn't end up being there because that too is now discontinued, it... Changing the name alone, regardless of whether or not the concept has changed, can actually bring in more interest than I think a lot of these brands tend to realize. Exactly. Look at what Puma did with the Ultra, right? They okay, so they realized the whole um, the whole velocity uh, velocity one point something. It didn't work. They they then developed the Evo Speed in their whole Evo um, era. Then that didn't work. Okay, then they did the one. And it was a complete, like, different direction, but they tried something new. Um, not the best name ever. We'll, we'll leave it at that. And they realized, okay, it doesn't work. Let's do something else. They actually moved on it. They took action. They introduced the Ultra, which is also very Mercurial-esque. Let's be honest. It's just a different interpretation with the whole Matrix Evo Whopper. But it works. People want the Ultra. It's a, it's, it, you know, it's actually a football boot that manages to spark desire because it's new and fresh. So New Balance, take note. God, duh, I mean, it's, it's, I'm not saying it's easy because of course it's not, but otherwise they would have done it, right? Right? Mm -hmm. Right? <laughs> I mean, it, but it's just, it, Puma has shown that it works. Ni As you said, Nike, okay, Magista was dead. They killed the the hyper venom in the in the hyper venom Phantom Two. They they had to do something else. Now, okay, Phantom GT is that going to work? Let's see. But if that doesn't work, they're probably going to kill that off as well because they 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 realize that in order to keep interest, you need to stay fresh. So Tequila to whoever created the Tequila, I uh, I, I feel for you and the long process you uh, you spent uh, developing this product. But um, now nah, it's got to go. Yeah, look, I think aside from maybe Mercurial and Predator, every other line of football boots, people care less and less about what came before. Mm. I, I think in order for a football boot to be successful now, it has to be presented in a way where th this is all new and this is why yeah. you should be excited about it and what's been done before it doesn't matter anymore. 
So unless you are Nike with the Mercurial or Adidas with the Predator, changing the name as often as you'd like is probably in most situations in your best interest. I agree. Now, third boot I would probably kill off is this one. And before <laughs> you like, before you like think what 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 on earth are you talking about, Jay? You love the Phantom GT, and I do. But I'm specifically talking about the high cut version of the Phantom GT. Like, let me just let me just. Uh, I understand <laughs> having a Mercurial Superfly Eight and a Vapor Thirteen because there's actually a height difference in the color. But here, I mean, if you took a, a look at this, like, really quickly, it, you might confuse it for the low cut. And like, what, what is the point of having the high and low cut version? Let, let me just get the low cut version, because it's ridiculous. Keep, you can talk for a bit. <laughs> like, what the? Uh, see, it appears to me that the mid-cut Phantom GT, for, this is for longtime viewers of the Boot Nerds podcast, but... Um, you'll know yeah. that J. Mike was not a fan of the collar on the Phantom Vision, either one or two. Um, and it appears that he has shifted his anger towards the collar on the Phantom GT. And I'll, Jay, I'll tell you the reason why that exists. It's an extra $25 for Nike. I, a lot of people love to complain about, oh, there's only like $10 or $20 of material, but they're charging 250 bucks or whatever it is. And there's far more that goes into what determines the final price tag of a football boot besides the cost of materials. But in the case of these, even the Superfly and the Vapor, like that you want to talk about where they're maximizing profit margin they're taking a little bit of extra material uh, yeah, to run yeah. up your ankle and they're charging you an extra 25 bucks for it yes. and, and there's a there's a, a shocking amount of people willing to pay for that yes but i'm not going to discontinue the superfly am i but we've no. we've talked about we've talked about the whole you know separating the the superfly and the vapor once again i don't think however that the superfly should be discontinued i just think it should be something significantly else than it is. It should be like the vessel of innovation. We've talked we've talked too many times about it to, to do it again. But this, my friend, is just borderline ridiculous. I, I come on. Give us something else. It's the same football boot. And yes, there's a slightly difference. And a slight difference when you put it on. But $25 is just that's a joke. Just give us one boot. The hypervenom phantom came out with one boot. And I realized well, all that for the pricing structure, it's a joke. Just give us the low cut or the high cut. Decide on one, roll with that, please. <laughs> and breathe. What, what, yeah, what's your take? It's, it's a, well, look, it's effectively like a 10% price increase for, for adding a little bit of material is, is, is kind of what it works out to. And I, it's just, yeah, I agree. It's, it's totally unnecessary, but you know what? That's, this is all of their marketing with the original Superfly and the Magista Obra really paying mm. off at this but, point. But, but that's the thing, my man. They don't talk about it. It's not like they, they you know, like they, they brand that, oh, you can get the low cut and you can get the high cut. No. They're just there. And, and for, there. For, for the average consumer who, who might not be able to, you know, might not know that it, there's a difference. I spoke to one of my teammates. He wanted to buy the, the Phantom GTs and he was like, oh, but do they make them in, in the high version? And I'm like, yep, yeah, but that's the one I'm, I'm wearing. And he was like, no, that looks like, the, but it's just, they're just so visually <laughs> similar, but they're so visually similar that, you know, that the tap, the, the, the pull tap on the low cut version is almost as high as the top of the color is on the high cut version. Yeah, and it's, it's funny too, With not even just with the GT, but the collars in general from Nike have gotten shorter and shorter. Mm. Like if you compare the Superfly 4 collar to what's wow. on the Superfly but 7 that was now, also like tall. That was quite tall. Yeah. Um, also, I did make an Instagram post maybe like a month and a half ago now. The Phantom GT collar, if you put it next to the Superfly 7, is the same design, just 180 degrees in the opposite direction. So, so even that's not really a, a, a unique design. That's it's quite true. funny. It's, true. <laughs> yeah, it's just the Superfly collar backwards. <laughs> that's all it is. I so, see it now. I see it now. Okay. Yeah, it, it's it's an interesting phenomenon that they've they've created there, it. where it's it's, it. some pr it's some proper brainwashing at this point. Kill it with fire, Nike. Please, the Phantom GT is a brilliant football boot and I love so many things about it, but that is just one thing that I simply get a, li I, I, I get a little mad about it. It's just pointless. Kill yeah, it off. I, 
I agree. It's but you know what? It's an easy way for them to have an extra variation. And look, at this point, it's still pretty well proven that there is a significant amount of consumers that are willing to pay that extra money for it. So I don't is really there, blame is, Nike. Is there really? Like, is there really? I think there is. I think there is. I okay. think there's a lot of people now that will not buy a football boot unless it has a little bit of a collar. Because uh, because uh, they think of whatever whatever benefit but, it brings them. But That's Ross, the this thing. Has a, is, this is, has I a feel collar. Like, tell me if you would agree with me on this, though. Do, I would say the vast majority of people that buy mid-cut football boots at this point in time, whether it's a top-end model, whether it's a takedown model, whatever variation from whatever brand it is, the vast majority of those consumers, whether they're educated, let's say that they're, I don't want to say uneducated, but they're like not, they're not boot nerds. They're not sitting here and watching two guys talk about football boots for an hour. Which they, we appreciate, by the way. Thank you. That that mid-cut boot that they're buying is offering some kind of a benefit when it comes to performance, when mm. it comes to ankle support, when it comes to whatever they want to believe in their mind. There's still a lot of people out there that think that about mid-cut football boots. Sure, so sure. I, I don't blame brands for doing that. I would love, and I think Puma has done a pretty good job with this with the future over the years, is if you're going to offer a mid and a low, like change up the construction in the heel because then at that point you at least have a little bit of a difference in terms of fit where one might fit you better than the other. I understand that can be maybe slightly confusing if you're buying online especially and you don't have the opportunity to try them on, but at, at least there's some extra variation beyond just paying extra money for some extra material. Yes. And, and the, the, as you say, the construction, the fit is, is different. It's, it's a lot different. It's not just like of a few like centimeters. It's not, what, what is it? A centimeter and a half. It's just, I don't, I don't get that. I would, I would definitely just kill it off and just be like real with, with the Phantom GT lovers out there. That would, that I think would be the, the, for companies such as, uh, so, wow, I can't speak English today. It's ridiculous. For a company as Nike, such a big company as Nike, that would be the the, the coolest thing to do. Be cool, guys. Kill it off. <laughs> you can drop the fire, just kill it. You don't have to. Anyway, um, those were like the three boots that I, were, uh, you know, Felt strongly Crossed about. my mind, yeah. I felt strongly about dropping those and then I had to think a little bit. My fourth choice and tell me if you agree with this or not, would be, and this is slightly controversial, the Puma Future. I'm not saying that they should drop the Puma Future silo, but I'm saying that the current line of Puma Future boots is something that I would look into quite a lot from Puma's side. Not only because we've had the same tooling for six generations. Think about that. The same flipping tooling. Six generations. Three years. That's too long but also because it's still running with the same net fit concept in different variation. And it feels like the boot hasn't progressed a lot over the last couple of years. It's still like the, they're still, you know, making soup over the same broth. It's like, it, 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 it still works, but it's getting slightly boring now. And to, in order to make sure that the future, which it feels like something that people are still excited about is still relevant and futuristic and innovative. Maybe it's time to, to like, just tear up the rule book, throw the old rule book out the window and just make a new rule book. You know what I mean? Yeah. Again, I feel like this is one of those situations where they are putting too much stock in the value of the Puma future name. And I think future is a good name. So don't get me wrong on that. But at this point in time, the safe to say the hype is gone or at least is significantly less than it was oh, at yes. launch. Mm -hmm. um, and then, and then to comment on the tooling, I know a lot of people like to, again, talking about the cost for the brands when it comes to football boots and how much it actually costs versus how much they actually sell them for. But when you see the same tooling over and over again from one generation to the next, that's where they're really saving money. Oh yes. Because you have to consider that with tooling, it, it's a plastic mold. And you have Those to have a plastic mold for the left and, and the right. Oh, yeah. And then every single size mm. needs to have its own mold as well. And that's yeah. where things get really, that's the most expensive part of a football boot so, so for any aspiring know, football boot designers out there. Yeah. If you don't know, like opening up a, a mold for anything is, is expensive. If you have to open up that up, both, both, uh, both feet, and then like how many different sizes are there? So many, yeah, you'd right? Go, yeah, you'd go from like six to 13 in most situations. Yeah, with right? half so sizes. It, yeah. Like that, that's, that's a lot of money. And, and I understand it's not, a, it's not a bad tooling. 
but it's just been going on for six generations now. And if this is the vessel of innovation for Puma, like the, like the really where they get really funky, right? Maybe it's time to actually start showing us some of said innovation. And, and to be fair, and you know what? Actually, this I've never even thought about this until right now. This isn't even just specific to the Puma future, but obviously the current future has a new wearable finish pattern on the sole plate. And I think the whole wearable finish trend, this is the brands realizing, hey, we can just put a brand new fancy pattern that looks really cool on the same old tooling. It costs us next to nothing to do. It doesn't even have to be a permanent finish. And it tricks people into thinking that it's different than what we had before. Um, it's, it's actually, it's genius now that, now that I'm thinking about it. But you're yes. right. The Puma future, it feels like it's it's at a point where I, I feel like Puma in general over the last couple of years maybe has been they've forced too many new models mm. where the 5.1 and the 6.1 are effectively the exact same thing. Oh, it the is. only difference and I've been I, I've said they're the exact same thing in my own videos a couple times now, but there is one difference and that's the insole. It does have the new nano grip insole, that's which is true. shared with the ultra. That is true. So, <laughs> and it but, has the price does, reduction. Does that warrant calling it as, I know, uh, you know, seasonal cycle and all that stuff, they need a new name, blah, blah, blah. But is it really, like really Puma? Is that, yeah. is that what we've, is that where we're at? Oh, new colorway, it, new insole, 6.1. Oh, cool. And, an, and another thing with the future, and we saw this with the one as well, the naming system is just in shambles. <laughs> like, how do you go from future... 17.1 did it start that far back then it went 18.1 then it went <sighs> 2.1 then it went 19.1 then it went 5.1 yeah no 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 and no and 4.1 5.1 now we're, like it's just all over the place and then the puma one is even worse so at this point people are like Unless you're really, really in the know and, and you're familiar with the history of the Puma future, you're not even going to know that this is like the latest and greatest variation or color. Exactly. Way. And then don't even get me started on the ultra naming because that is proper. Like then you have Puma future 6.1 where the six is like the generation and then the point one is the like the price point. But then on the ultra, it's the other way around. So the first takedown of the ultra is called the, the obviously Puma Ultra 1.1. Second takedown is called Puma Ultra 2.1. That doesn't make any sense, right? Yeah. So if they if they change that up, they need to be consistent. I'm it, just look, and this is this is the thing with with Nike and Addy. I, I just I'm so over this this point one plus <laughs> point two. Like I'm just it's it's so confusing. I think for a lot of people, and I think Addy's a little bit more structured or it's plus 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4. Mm. But now when you look at the X line and it's, it's what, what is this? I have no idea about football boots. What's the name of this? Oh, it's an X ghosted 0.1. What the heck does that mean? And, and then you have the Adidas Nemesis 0.1. So <laughs> X, ghosted, uh, X ghosted, you have the Adidas silo name, m model generation name, and then price point. Here you have Adidas silo name, price point name. What the f is going yeah, on? And then you just you have to- You can't be adding decimal points to words and names. You just can't you be doing that. And you still have Copa 20, like, ah. But anyway, going back to the future, I just wanted to say, I totally agree with you. It's It's been easy for Puma. It's It's been clever from them to use the same tooling. It's just unfortunate for them that there are these two idiots sitting, pretending to be <laughs> experts and nerds on this podcast, you know, just slagging them off. I'm sorry, Puma, I love you. Please make more boots with me. But still, uh, I mean, time to if, refresh. Um, I know you you are generally in charge of the names for the podcast, but if I could be Josh.9 for this episode, that would be great. <laughs> I'll look into great. it. I'll look into That'd it. Be. I'll see if I, I'll make it straightforward or confusing. Depends on which, yeah. uh, if I'm adding- Whichever or way, but I would love to have a decimal point in my name this week. Okay, definitely, definitely. Maybe I should be J Elite today. <laughs> see, and that's, look at Nike's done. The problem with, with even the Elite Pro Academy system yeah, yeah. is they've dumbed down the name of Academy where I think that used to ha hold some prestige within the Nike brand with the Academy packs that people were always very excited about. But I also think that it makes the boots less memorable. Like I, I liked the idea of having a name associated to even a takedown model, like Mercurial Teleria. Like I'm never going to forget that, but am I going to remember, remember the Vapor 12 Pro? Like 
who cares? Yeah. Like, who cares? But when you had the, and it was the same with the velocity, what was it called? The vapor, what was, what was the takedown called before they called it? Uh, it was like vo vo Veloce, Veloce, I'm not Veloce, sure how you were supposed yeah, to say. Yeah. I, I don't know. I like, I like giving a name to but the But the boots. Talaria was cool. It would be nice if they brought that back. So it was a Nike Mercurial Talaria yeah, instead of the, the, like the vapor. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Maybe we should call you now. Nah, I'll, I'll figure something out. Let's see. <laughs> let's let's see what happens when we figure out the name. Anyways, um, the last thing I just wanted to bring up is is Umbro. Now, to be fair, I have not played in the boot. I've only held it in my hand. I'm talking about the Umbro Velocita Five Elite, so their latest laceless model, right? And I get what they're trying to do. They wanted to make a uh, a laceless leather boot with the Velocita Three. Elite, cool. Kudos, you managed to bring it out before the Copa 19 plus. Hey, round of applause. <laughs> but right now, they're basically just stuck with a boot that's been kind of the same for the last couple of years. Uh, no one really cares about it. It's kind of a mercurial wannabe. It's stuck a little bit in between. You know, it's it does the same as the Ultra and the and the Furon does, but it's a significantly worse boot. It's not very aggressive. It's not a good laceless boot either, especially when you look at the competition that 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 you know from Adidas with with their X's. I mean, that's how you do a laceless speed boot these days, right? I just don't see the point of the Velocity series anymore. When it came out, it's cool. The first Velocity, it was it was actually something that was a genuine competitor to to the uh, to the F50, the X's, the Mercurials, because it was so light and it was actually a throwback to the first F50 from 2010. Cool, it worked. And then they kind of screwed it up from there. So again, I think it's it, it's just gotten to a point where no one really cares about the Velocity name anymore. I'm I'm, I'm even shrugging my shoulders. These I'm like, okay, another one. I don't even. I don't trust it. I, I don't trust the name anymore. Do you get me? Yeah. It's look, Umbro, I I love Umbro was like a childhood favorite for me. Like I really like that. And I recently did a video on the Toco Pro. Toco, yeah. How is that? Is, I haven't seen it in person. Okay. Here's the funny part about what Umbro's done. Because they have the Toco line and they have the Velocita, Velocita line now. Yeah. The Toco replaces what was the Medusa? Oh, Acuro. Oh, Acura, Acura yeah, okay. is what it replaces, right? Uh -huh. And if you look at the if you look at the last generation of Umbro boots, the the Velocita was leather, no? Yeah, it was the laceless leather boot, uh -huh. and then the Acura was the synthetic boot with more of like a flashy look that you would think is actually going to maybe have a chance of selling for for the next generation Velocita yep. and. Toco, which is a replacement for the Acura, they basically realize, oh, you know what? Actually, the people that want leather probably want laces, and the people that want laceless probably don't want leather. So let's just switch them back to the way they probably should have been in the first place. And look, there, there's just issues with the brand at this point. There were a lot of comments, because my conclusion on the boots were that I, I like the general quality of them. That's still present with Umbro. It's pretty evident to me. Um but the way that they fit and there's just a lot of design issues that don't make it that appealing. Plus the price point doesn't make any sense. Mm. Like that Toco Pro retails for $250. It's which is just way too much money. You can't charge the same as no. Nike, Adidas and Puma. Well, what, what, what should they charge for their boots? Like the, the Velocity 5 uh, Elite, which is at, uh, it's 200 euros. What, it's what, too much what money. should they charge? What, I, I would say, a fair price point for those in terms of the quality and what they offer, 150 euros. Okay, people would consider it. Like, yeah. look at what Puma have done. Good quality for the right price. Good value for yeah. money. Go that way, Umbro. It, but the, kill the, the Velocity line. Do something new. Mix it up. Bring something exciting back to the speed boot game. Change up that tooling, please. It's ridiculous. Like, you can't yeah, make a that, speed boot and have the shortest studs in the world. Yeah, that's the kill other problem with that line. A to the sap. Bring something new in, you know, get people excited again. Give them yeah. some, give them a silo name, a concept that they trust in. That when something comes out, they know, okay, this is actually proper good. People have lost trust in the Velocity name. I'm sorry. Might be, yeah, there's, there's no more trust in the Umbro brand. They, the problem is they've been out of the picture for too long. And at this point they seem like they're, while I don't want to say that they're like not trying new things, they're more so kind of just playing off of ideas that currently exist and are somewhat popular. They're just, 
I think in order for one of these like smaller brands to be successful in 2020 is they have to do something that's legitimately different, but then also affordable. And I don't feel like they're doing either of those two things right now. And I, I get accused a lot of like living in the past when it comes to football boots, you probably get the same thing, right? Like oh, I, I love a T90 laser three and, and there's this guy I do a podcast with that loves to tell me that's a terrible football boot. Well, yeah. He's a but you know guy. what? I'm living in the past. And a lot of the comments on the Umbro video that I made, I was surprised. Like Umbro is still a big brand. What are you talking about? Umbro hasn't been... Re- Jay, what was the last relevant Umbro football boot that the came first. out before 2000? And it's got to be like... You got to go back to like 2006, 2007, probably. <sighs> Maybe even before that. Before now, Umbro I had think, a legitimately... I think when they did the... Um, I think they had the Stealth Pro. Um, which was pretty cool. That was 2010, nine or 10. I think that was a pretty but good- But that group. was after, that was after Nike's takeover, yeah? It was. Yes. It was. Because people like to always refer back to the Nike takeover as like mm. the undoing of the Umbro brand. I think they were they were declining at that point already. I, I don't think I that Umbro was in agree. the process of like skyrocketing because a lot of people- I saw this again a lot in the comments. A lot of people said, oh, Nike bought them out, stripped them of all of their assets, like the the England kit and stuff like that, took their endorsement deals, and then sold them off again. Yeah. And yeah, they, they did do that. But at that point in time, there's a reason why Umbro was even for sale in the first place, is it was a brand in decline. It's been... It's been quite some time since Umbro was was like a top brand. They're historically a top brand because everybody knows what Umbro is, but they've not been relevant for a no. very, very long time in the football boot scene. And I think the last the last time people actually cared was in 2015 when they brought out the first Velocitan. It made a little splash and they didn't follow up on it really. So people kind of forgot again. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But uh, it sounds like we basically agree. And I'm like, I didn't go, I wasn't too outrageous um, to everyone out there who might've been a little bit hurt. I'm sorry. Uh, That's the way we feel. Uh, We're only doing this and saying this to hopefully see a better future for for all of these brands. I mean, at the end of the day, the more more strong brands we have, the the better for us as boot nerds, right? Yeah. Look, I think we all want to see Good, better football boots. I think that's that's the ultimate point of all of this criticism. And while some of these boots that we did criticize are already quite good, there's there's certainly room for improvement in all five. Exactly. With that bombshell, I think we should move on to some questions. Now, if you have any questions for Josh and myself and you would like us to answer them, you can leave them in the comment section right down below. We're going to answer them more or less in every episode the best questions, that is. Uh, we have one from Random Guy. Uh, why do these vids get so li- little likes, though? And I don't know. So uh, if you like the video, go, go leave a thumbs up on it because we really appreciate it. And then more people will see it and we spread it out to the entire world and, you know, more boot nerds coming in. That's awesome. So uh, leave us a like. Thank you. <laughs> just, a, just a quick comment on likes on YouTube in general. I don't know. I've been doing YouTube for a little while now. It just seems to be a fairly random phenomenon based on what I can tell. <laughs> just, there's no rhyme or reason to it. Yeah, absolutely not. Absolutely. Not. Wait, what did you do before you you started doing YouTube? Did you? Is it you who worked at a soccer store? I I did for oh. for a period. You got to tell time, me that yes. story one day, but not today because we have a lot of questions. <laughs> um, there's one from uh, CR7 El Mejor del Mundo. Jay needs to stop being so mean to. Oh, I think it means, oh my God, maybe both don't notice it, but I feel bad for him sometimes. And I'm not sure if he's like playing on the Josh, J- like who's Jay here? Is that me or is, are you really I Jay? Think, I think, I think he's trying to suggest that you're very mean to me, which I, I saw a comment and I, I died laughing. I died. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I mean, let, let's put predi- if, if there's still some people out there who genuinely believe that Josh and I, we Ugh. really hate each other. Let, let me just go and completely debunk that theory. It's not the case. We're good friends. Uh, we wouldn't do this if we didn't like each other. Um, and, and you know, if I mean, I'm sorry. I, okay, just for, for the viewers of the Boot Nerds podcast, if at any point J. Mike legitimately hurts my feelings, I will make it known publicly on the podcast in that moment. 
But uh, until I, I come out and say, Jay, you know what? That hurt. That, that cut me deep. Yeah. Uh, you can assume that I'm okay. Yes. But, but, but guys, let me also tell you this. And this is, this is to me what like a, you know that, that, that you're cool with people, you're good friends with people when there's actually a little bit of banter going around. And you know, you know the other guys like boundaries, but up until those boundaries, you can just take the piss right, basically. And that's, it's just a bit of fun. Yeah, um, Pick, picking on people is 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 fine. It's, it's fun. It's it's fun. I mean, if you <laughs> look, look, I always have this theory in life, right? Uh, and it's a rule of living that if you can't laugh at yourself, then 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 you know you're not secure enough about yourself. So, you know, you can laugh at yourself. I laugh at myself a lot. My stupid hair, my glasses, and my teeth, and all that stuff. Don't don't criticize my football boots, though. My designs. Then we're <laughs> like, no, uh, uh. Luckily, I mean, you haven't slipped up yet. That's good. Thank you for that. But that day see, will come. See, this is why we're friends. <laughs> um, Kale Clumsy, what a name. I'm looking for a new pair of turp boots to play on worn out AG pitches. My current favorites are the Adidas Mundial teams and the Puma Ultra 1.1 MGs. What are your favorite turf boots? I don't know about you, Josh, but I, I was going to say the Mundial teams. I think they're fantastic. Yeah, I'm a big Mundial team guy. That is my go-to turf boot and has been for a little while. Yep. I, I really liked, they're not available anymore, but the Ronaldinho Doi or Dua inspired Tiempos. Remember those? Right, yeah. Those were, those were pretty cool. I liked those. But yeah, like the Mundial team, especially for the money, what are they, like $95? It's nothing. And it's just it, such a high quality and it feels, it's sturdy, good good grip. It's It's nice. Yeah, that's a good, that's a proper turf pattern. That, the problem with so many like of these modern turf boots is the turf patterns are so minimal. Like they just, there's not much there. There's so much substance to a Mundial team. And I get that it's kind of it bulky here, and a little bit heavy by today's standards, but it there's a reason why, tell me this, when you go and play, look, man. if you go to an indoor facility with a turf pitch, I don't think I've ever seen anybody wearing Mundial teams that wasn't good. I feel like that's like, that's like the, like when you see someone wearing Copas, they're usually going to be pretty decent. I think the, the Mundial team is like the same stereotype I, I would give to people. You're either a coach, a referee, or you're just really good. Yeah, these are just, these are just amazing. Honestly, I, I really like them. And, and I was just like, I thought I'd gotten rid of them but but the the j mike boot shelf never fails to de uh, to, to deliver it's it's i was almost going to say never fails to disappoint that might also be the case at times but um not today thankfully uh mundial teams that's the way to go stay with those yeah. they're the best team guys none of you talked about the modernized puma king top have you had any experience with them and are they worth buying and i'll be quite honest i haven't worn them on the pitch, I've had them in my hands. I've had them on my feet. Uh, and that's kind of the reason I haven't been talking too much about them because I, I I don't feel it's it's right for me to go out and give people advice about something I genuinely don't really know enough about. With that said, yeah. I think for the price, they were like 100 euros. Are they? I'm not sure. Are they? I think they're 100 sure. euros. I think they're actually pretty, you know, the leather's good. The fit is nice. It, it has a really low toe, but it gives you that Puma King Top feel, but just in a much sleeker, really nice, uh, really nice package. Why am I writing Unisport in the search field on unisportstore.com? That is absolutely ridiculous. Okay. <laughs> King top. Nice. Uh, sorry, 140 is the King. It's the King pro that's a hundred euros, which is also a nice boot, but the King top is 140 euros. We have it for a hundred and two euros on unisportstore.com, shameless plug, by the way. Uh, but but it's it's a nice fitting football boot. And if you love that slightly more traditional look, you want a, a tongue from, from the feel I had on feet, it it definitely performs. Would I go for, I mean, if we're in that price range, would I go for the King Platinums? I probably would, but you know, very solid boot for the money. Yeah, I, I haven't tried these yet either. I really like the way that they look. I, I'm going to look into bringing these in, actually, because the white and black ones look phenomenal. They do. I really just like that classic look. It's it's very Puma King Platinum looking, to be honest. And it is. And uh, again, leather is a difficult thing to judge in pictures. 
I've always found, especially leather like this, where they've gone for this kind of smooth finish. Mm. It's very difficult to tell how thick or thin that is. And it has a little bit of like foam um, on the inside, j just a little mm. bit to give it the, the, the effect of, of where the stitches would normally be. But that leather is proper soft and it feels, it has that same like low profile uh, sensation as, as you get in the, in the King, in the King Pros basically. It, it, yeah, it's basically it, a, a slightly buffed up version of the King Pro. Uh, I'm gonna look, just based on visual aesthetics, if that's even the right way to say things. <laughs> this is this is one of those football boots, similar to a lot of the Adi Gloro models that mm. we've seen. It's It seems like a little bit of a mashup of like really premium elements and like kind of super cheap takedown elements blended into one. And $140, $140 euro retail price. It's not, it's not expensive by, by modern football boot standards. But then I, I look at something like this and I always circle back to something like a Nike Premier, which but, retails for $30 less. And but, you can what, always get on sale for like 80, 70, sometimes even $60. But what would you get? Visually, I like this a lot just because of the unique factor. But let me put it this way. I've, again, I've only worn it on feet. I haven't played in it, uh, but walking a bit around in them, I would pay the extra money and go for the Kings. They just feel a little bit, you know, I don't like that. Uh, it, the, the premiers feel a little flappy because of the outsole. It's a little too too soft and unresponsive yeah. for me. And the Kings kind of fixes that, giving you that same lovely feeling. And they're a little bit sharper, it feels like on the ball. Okay, cool. You know, I, I, I want to bring these in actually. They're yeah. uh, really interesting. Absolutely. So, uh, so great like shout. I them. It's, it's cool. I like seeing boots like this. Yep. Yep. Uh, Jake fourteen soccer ask yo, Jack Quavius, should I get the pure grip socks? And I'm not sure. I'm 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 not sure what kind of question that is. I'm not sure, uh, Jack fourteen soccer, if you have been paying attention over the last couple of uh, episodes, because um, I I know a guy who's come on the podcast uh, quite a few times and like plucked this relentlessly. Uh, but there's actually I can say being an outsider here, there's actually a good reason for that because these socks as my good friend josh has said are the best value for money grip socks you can get like yeah you can get more expensive socks and you can also get some alternatives that are genuinely also very very good but for 15 dollars uh you can buy three of these compared to some of the more expensive models that aren't even in my opinion as good Yes, go go buy them at least, and if you give them a try, and if you don't like them, well, it's fifteen dollars. So I mean, what are you going to lose? Or you can also get the pure pure sleeves, which are ten dollars, and they're absolutely brilliant. How many times you've sat there with your team socks, considering if you should cut them so they fit with your grip sock of choice, and you have you don't want to do it because the socks start fraying and stuff. You don't have to do that with the sleeves. It's brilliant, brilliant. I don't understand. No one thought about it before uh, before Josh did. What a glowing endorsement. Yeah, I know. That was, that was beautiful. Yeah. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't have done it better myself. And can I just comment, uh, a lot of first-time Pure Grip socks buyers, I've seen some comments about shipping. Mm. And oh, yeah. <laughs> I'd love to offer free shipping. I'd love to. Unfortunately, due to COVID-19, shipping prices are way higher than they would normally be because more people are shipping things because less people are going places. So that has, has not helped. When and if this slows down, I'm sure shipping prices will come back down a little bit. But again, that's beyond my control. Second thing I will note is that if you want just one pair of socks and, and the shipping price is, let's say, half the price of the socks, which $7, $8 for shipping is not a crazy amount of money. That's just that's the reality of shipping a, a small package. But if you order with a friend and maybe two friends and you guys order three, four five pairs, the shipping cost stays the same. The sock cost obviously doesn't change either. So you can kind of split up that shipping cost between multiple people and you're paying $1.50 for shipping rather than $7. Also, can I just say this much? There are certain grip socks companies out there that are charging $30, $40, $50 for socks and they're offering free shipping. Well, that's because they're charging $50 <laughs> for socks. For sock. <laughs> so they can just work it in to the already ridiculous margin that they've created for themselves. Yeah. So- Look, you can't, unfortunately, the shipping cost looks higher proportional to the cost of the, the product because the, because socks the are products so cheap. are so I get inexpensive. Uh, I get it. That's yeah. just, 
Like, that's just how it works. I, I mean, I've, I've tried to explain this to people, but there, there's a lot of people that just don't seem to get it. I, I wish I could be like Amazon and just offer free shipping on everything, but that's simply not possible. Well, you, you could, but then you just have to take a higher price for the socks. And I don't think well, people are interested in that either. So no, no, I get it. So. I get it. Fair point. Um, I would love to do more questions, but for the sake of the length of the podcast, I think we're going to cut it off here and I'm going to save the questions for next time. So we're going to also going to, uh, we're, we're going to go through some of those because what we're going to talk about next time is, uh, is a new drop from uh, one of the big brands. It's, um, I think we're, it's going to split opinion a little bit. Uh, so that's going to be fun. I'm excited to see what, uh, what you think of, uh, at least some of the boots, uh, interesting stuff but we're also going to answer a lot of questions in that episode so if you have any leave them in the comment section right down below don't forget to go and hit the thumbs up button on the Boonerds podcast if you enjoyed the show also of course if you haven't subscribed already go hit the white bubble in the middle of the screen you can also go and follow Josh and myself on our respective other channels uh, over to the sides and uh, with that said I have been J Mike and I approve this message go by Josh I have sucks. one really quick inquiry regarding the drip puma ultras jay yeah because there's been a lot of comments about this and it just i just reminded myself because i'm looking over at them okay the drip yes. is it red or is it orange it's peach it's supposed to be red and it's actually the same red as the original king top that Rigo burst song wore we specifically asked for the same color code so it is a very bright red with a hint of of peach but it's not orange Exactly. Okay. I've been telling people it's very bright red, not orange. You're a good man. Click case solved. Thank you very much. Ciao, guys. Thanks for watching. <laughs>